everybody. Welcome back. We're in segment two, talking to Jim Tam, and we are talking about his book, Radical Collaboration, Five Essential Skills to Overcome Defensiveness and Build Successful Relationships. So in the first part, we're talking about how it's important to be open, have self-accountability, have self-awareness, um, learning how to do negotiating and problem solving. And the first, what, what's the one that I, oh, and collaborative, what is it? What's the first one? Collaborative, Collaborative intention. intention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are the five skills. And um, in the one that you talked about openness, um, one of the things um, that I'm noticing, at least in a lot of um, companies, is they're making a big push as a result of uh, the Me Too movement and Black Lives Matters to, you know, bring um, an awareness of um, different ways of, of uh, um being more inclusive in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've actually had um, the opportunity to coach um, diversity, equity, inclusion candidates about kind of um, working in the place, workplace. And oftentimes they talk about how they, if they didn't, they don't really say this, but ultimately relates back to openness and creating a sense of safety and of, of, of being able to share stuff. And so now work is becoming much more psychological, like people to be, to explain what's happening, they somehow have to go into like some stuff that's really deep about themselves, um, or at least some of the ways of approaching it is very psychological, which is, which makes going to work not feel safe anymore. <laughs> um, so how, what did you mean when you said, you know, you have to be able to learn to create safety? What does that specifically mean? That's the first question. And secondly, how do you do it in the context of these really highly charged psychological matters of the heart? Yeah, well, there's a difference between openness regarding work things and openness regarding your personal life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people think that when we say you want to increase openness within the organization. It mm -hmm. means that you have to go in and Monday on, and you have to report on what happened, you know, between you and your spouse over the weekend or what's going on with your kids and stuff. And, and some people love that and, and that's fine and stuff, but there are a lot of people that are much more, much lower on openness and they sort of wear their life a little closer to their vest and they don't feel comfortable doing that. All right. Well, when we say, you need to create more openness. We're not necessarily saying that people need to be more open about that stuff. Mm -hmm. What they have to be more open though about to be effective is they have to be open about what their, their feelings and fears and things like that are regarding work. You know, it, a lot of times people would sit there in a meeting and be, they'd be thinking to themselves, this is a bad idea. You know, I don't think this is going to work but they're afraid to say anything for fear mm. that they're going to be criticized as not being a team member and stuff. Mm. So if you're a team leader uh, and you've created this environment where people are afraid to speak up that way because they get criticized anytime you disagree with them, uh, you know, you're heading in the wrong direction. So what you have to do is you have to make it clear that I'm not saying you have to share everything that's going on in your life. But you do have to share what's going on in your mind about this work stuff. Okay. And I want to hear about it. And even if I disagree with you on that, I want to hear about it. So that means I'm, if I'm the boss, I can't beat you up just because you disagree with me. Okay, let's just do some role playing. Okay. Sure. So I want to hear what it sounds like when you're open and one when you're not. So I'm just going to be an employee. You're going to be my boss. Okay. Just yeah. so we'll see how this plays. Yeah. So Jim, I don't think we're going to hit the ship date. I'm looking at the quality reports and we're not going to ship this on time. And I, I know that we want to ship this in um, August 15th, but I don't see that happening. Wow. Okay. So that's a problem. Uh, we, let's talk about what's, what's bringing that about. You know, what are the issues here? What do you see happening? T tell me what's, what you believe is going on there. Right. Okay. What I see in quality assurance is blah, 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 blah. You know, it's really about, um, we, we have two, we have standards that are too strict. Too strict. Okay. Well, the standards are probably there for a reason. You know, let's talk about what the, what the reason is. 
Are there right. other ways that we can meet those standards? Are there other ways that we can meet the need for those standards? Yeah. You know, uh, I think that we're you know, we're going we we're going to be too hardcore about those standards. Like some of those, we need to like loosen up a little bit because like there's a difference. We have a whole bunch of how does this standard for you know that we've marked out compare to pro making promises with clients that we've said that we're going to meet and we're not going to meet. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't know. There's two different kinds of standards of which the actual written standards do not actually fulfill. Yeah. And how are we all contributing to this problem? Well, I feel like I've been telling our quality assurance guys that we need to get this product out on time because our customers, you know, we made a promise to them and we have a bunch of orders on the line mm -hmm. contingent upon making this one promise and we haven't hit it. So I, I don't know. I'm being accountable to my customer. That's my job. Mm -hmm. um, they're being accountable to a set of standards that I think um we could be a little bit looser on mm -hmm. and what's going to happen if they uh they're shipped and they're not up to the standard i think that what we're thinking about is, is currently you know i think we'll make it i mean i think that the customer is going to be happy and we can work through some of those kinds of problems later mm -hmm. and what's that going to do to our effectiveness if you have to go back and correct those kinds of problems I think the client wants the stuff sooner rather than later, and they're willing mm -hmm. to put up with some stuff that we may have to fix later on. Mm -hmm. So what do you think should happen here? I think what I'd need to do is um, have, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we've actually gone through. So yeah. if, if I were to model, if I were to say like, okay, what were you doing? You were kind of showing both sides. You're showing, you're allowing me to say my side, but you're actually portraying the standards of the quality assurance saying like, there's a reason there is a positive intent that the other party that you have conflict with has. So that's what I yeah. heard is the structure of it. Yeah. And you're getting me to kind of like get curious about what that positive intent was and what my positive intent was within terms of like challenging this whole construct. So I, I saw, I saw that happening. What yeah, else were you doing in this it's, scenario? Well, it's, it's trying not to make somebody wrong, right. at least at this stage. You know, right. I mean, there, it, there, it may be at some point in time, I, the, the boss has to say, no, this is the way we're going to do it. And this is why we're going to do it. And this is how I want it done. Okay. Okay. It may come to that, but before it comes to that, uh, you'll get more information. People will be more willing to be open if they can freely express themselves without the boss saying, no, that's a bad idea. Or that's wrong. Or you shouldn't be talking that way or follow the rules. You know, ah, uh, okay. Those are all potential things. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Could have been like quality insurance is there for a reason. CJ, you just got to trust them and let's move on. That could have been yeah. like one, like shut the door right away. Or it right. could be like, stop worrying about your area, focus on your own stuff. You know, like it's just, it, it's just like getting curious. So you got curious and you were trying to get a sense of their positive intention that was was driving all of this. Yeah, and 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 what you're trying to do is you're trying to get get each person to look at it from the the whole. Mm. You know, yeah, their their livelihood is based on their little part there. You know, uh, and one of the problems that organizations get into uh, with collaboration is they want everybody to be collaborative, but they only reward them for their, you know, based on their particular part. Mm, mm -hmm. So I might be, you know, telling the salespeople, I want you to help each other here, put more time in supporting other people, you know, but I'm still going to pay you your annual bonus only based on what you perform yourself. Well, right. what do you think they're going to do? You know, where are right. they going to spend their time? Right. So if you can get people to be looking at the bigger picture, that's right. a good way of helping too. Yeah. It's interesting because as I was role playing though, I was feeling defensive. I wasn't maybe showing defensiveness, uh -huh. but I could feel internally that I was feeling defensive. Uh -huh. So in that particular case, how would you, so here I am trying to be self-aware, which I was, yeah. and I was like, well, I'm feeling defended. Like I have to go explain my perspective and why my perspective is better than the other. Uh -huh. um, what would you say to that part of me that was like, okay, well, Okay, Jim, I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> and I'm going to win this argument. 
Well, Joe, we, or it's, we, I felt like you're defending the other, the quality <laughs> assurance guys more than me. And you're my manager and head of sales. What the heck? Okay. So I'm like, well, Jim, you know, like I was getting, I, I could feel that internally, even though I wasn't presenting that. So what to do with that? Right. Cause I was feeling defensive in that case. Well, it, it's helpful to know what defensiveness is about. Mm -hmm. Defensiveness is always fear-based, always, always, always fear-based. Mm -hmm. So this is helpful information to know if you're sitting across the table from somebody who's getting very defensive. Mm -hmm. It's good to know that underneath that defensive behavior is fear, because mm -hmm. then if you can dig skillfully enough, skillfully enough and deep enough, maybe you can make that person feel safer. You know, right. perhaps it, had I been more aware of your defensiveness, I could have asked you more about how, uh, you know, how, what you might do to, to uh, work on the problems as they arise later on, if we do ship them without the high level of quality control or something along those lines. Yeah. So it, it feels safer for you, you know, that you're really being yeah. heard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. So, so that's basically an example of what safety looks like in terms of, and, and the, kind of the the opposite would be this kind of like shutting down no we can't yeah. just be quiet like you know just keep like it's kind of follow like the I'm gonna, yeah, yeah follow the rules okay so that's kind of what the opposite looks like um i want to talk about one other thing that i've seen very commonly is that now because corporations are corporations they understand these variables do amount to uh, you know business results and they want organizations to be more collaborative um now people are getting part of their raises based on how well they collaborate. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I see two different things. Um, I see two different expressions of this. I have extroverts who love hearing themselves speak all the time. I'm, I'm one of them. Okay. Then I have my, my, sadly, and then I have my husband who's an introvert and my kids who are introverts and like, they, they don't really like to talk in meetings. They listen and then, when appropriate, if they hear something that they get curious about, they say something. So oftentimes collaboration is being equated with speaking up, um, yeah. but not all personalities are oriented towards speaking up. So how does one create a safe environment when you have different personality types and so that collaboration feels safe and good for everyone, even given their personality? Yeah, well, collaboration isn't, it shouldn't be measured by noise, uh, the amount of noise <laughs> that you make. You know, sometimes this, it's the squeaky wheel uh, concept, and, but that's not very effective for collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're, if you're a, a supervisor over people who are more introverted, who are, who are more, uh, less open, uh, you know, keep it to themselves more, you're going to have to go out of your way uh, to express your desire to hear what they have on their mind, to hear what their thoughts are. Mm -hmm. And so you have to ask more open-ended questions. You have to keep reassuring them that you really want to hear this, that this is really important. Uh, you may have to find other ways of getting that information. You know, instead of, of uh, having a big meeting with everybody there, you talk to them individually. You know, you talk to them over the, at the coffee pot even or something less formal. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, there are ways of gathering more of that information. Okay. Uh, and then here's what I get in return. Yeah. It is going to take so long to make a decision. If I have to like have one-on-one -on -one in conversations with the introverts and like, or give them a whole agenda beforehand. So they're more comfortable. Like, so what I do is as a coach, I'm like, well, here's some things that you can do for introverts. Like they like to have an agenda beforehand so they can think contemplatively before, the mm -hmm. actual conversation happens, then when you ask them to collaborate, they'll participate or ask them to ask them first to talk about their opinion so mm -hmm. that if someone else talks about it, they feel like, well, now I have nothing else to talk about. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that requires work from the manager to, it does. to create an agenda, create the questions that you're going to ask, um, to go back and loop back with the introverts and go, how did that meeting go for you? And they're like, well, I totally disagree with, you know, CJ's idea. Then it's like, well, why didn't you say so in the meeting? Now, like, that's a good point. Had you mentioned in the meeting, we could bring it up. But now, like, we, we have a deadline that's coming up and we can't bring it up now. 
you know, that's why being a manager and trying to create a collaborative environment is one of the hardest jobs that a manager is going to be asked to do. Yeah. You know, it's like if you were, if you were managing horses, you wouldn't, instead of people, you know, you wouldn't think that, that all the horses are going to line up the way you want them to <laughs> or whatever right. the animal is, you know, but, uh, but somehow people get this in their mind that if the boss wants something, everybody's going to line up and salute. And it doesn't work that way anymore. Right. You know, people are too mobile. People can go someplace else. You'll have higher turnover. Uh, so yeah, it's hard work to create this collaborative uh, mindset among a team or in an organization. Yeah. It's and it, well, I effort. mean, and the sad thing is, is that what I've noticed is, and why I'm even hired is because people aren't trained, like, well, no, you know, people aren't trained to know what to do, yeah. like that they're actually different personalities they are different kind of disposition. Some is more, one is more risk averse. So they're going to be focused in a certain way during a meeting. And yeah. so if you shut them down right away, like you're shutting down their gift, which is to bring kind of a risk aversity into it or someone who is, you know, opposite that, you know, they each have their gifts. And so it's very hard as a manager to be able to negotiate these differences and spot them out because you know when I'm their when I'm their coach I can listen to all the deltas like okay I'm like well, who's the problem problem person that you're having issues with <laughs> right right and right. then usually I'm like okay could it be that they're blah 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 blah, blah you know because I've seen all these different things I'm like and I can and I have all these different personality assessments and conflict assessments that can be like well I'm hearing they're this kind of person that kind of person likes to be addressed in this particular way but that's very psychological right like the manager yeah. did not have to learn how to do that before and now that's right they have to understand that they're different people they operate differently than you um, well, it's a different managerial skill than was yeah. required back in the 1950s. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it really is. And it really is about, I'm going back to what you said about creating safety, because if the person who's risk averse or risk avoidant, um, or no, that's risk averse or risk tolerant, you have those two people in the room, you have to make both of them feel safe that they can be themselves yeah. and that it's perfectly okay. Um, the and last everything question. is more complex these days. The whole <laughs> Every, world is more complex. In my <laughs> days, they used to do things this way, Jim. You yeah, know, no, it's... The, the the time of the Lone Ranger is long gone. It just yeah. doesn't work that way. I, I was even, I, you know, I was I was doing some work with some dairy farmers in New Zealand, mm -hmm. and they said, you know, what do we care about international collaboration? You know, and I said, all right, well, let's talk about why you care about it. Well, you know, it turns out that, yeah, they milk their cows and they sell the milk to a local, you know, collector. Well, mm -hmm. the local collector sells it to a, a big corporation. The big corporation turns it into powdered milk. The, the powdered milk is given to a different corporation that goes to, right. to China and, you know, uh, you name. And it's like, they didn't have any idea about how complex this was. They're not just selling milk you know, right. to, in a milk can to a distributor. It, right. There are so many more influences on them. The, what's going on in the world economy impacts them milking the cow. Yeah. And, you know, it didn't used to be that way. And, yep. and now it just about everything is. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting that, you know, we all want to move towards unity and to be more global is like part of that unification yet it makes our lives way more complex because there's so many more factors to understand, yeah. right? Just like even in given the example of being a 1950s manager where you could just bark out the orders yeah. and they would happen. Yeah. Now you have to like be cognizant that they're different people with different styles and that you have to get them to work together. And then you have to work with your own stuff, <laughs> making yeah. it all happen. Yeah. I want to talk yeah. about the Everybody next... wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's in the next segment talk about defensiveness, because I think that that's, you know, it's one thing like basically managing groups of people outside of yourself and being sort of a mediator amongst no. people. The other is to deal with your own issues, which you're going to have when you're having these conversations and how not to be defensive. Yeah. So we've been talking to um, Jim Tam about his book, um, Radical Collaboration. 
five essential skills to overcome defensiveness and build successful relationships. We have been focusing on openness and how to create safety because these I think are some of the things that I'm I'm hearing are like the hardest things that people have to work with. And then yeah. um, I want to talk about defensiveness. You describe self-awareness and in the next segment, I want to talk about defensiveness. Thank you so much. Thank you.